Hey guys, I thought I would quickly come in and do this widow tag. <laughs> A widow tag. So if you're curious about this widow tag, stay tuned. Yeah, you heard that right, a widow tag. So this is a tag that I believe was created by this really amazingly funny, entertaining, and just absolutely lovely YouTuber called Inside Beauty with the Old Girl. And her name is Sheila, and she is from somewhere down south. And... Her channel is, she's she's a mix of a bunch of different topics, but she's more lifestyle. She likes to share the things that she likes to do and all that stuff. She's really funny. If you don't know who she is, I will, of course, link her channel below. But anyways, she just celebrated a milestone of hitting a thousand subscribers. And I'm so excited for her because she is absolutely a wonderful warm-hearted lady and I hope if you don't know where you head on over or tell her I send you over and uh, check her out and subscribe. Anyways, she did this tag called the widow tag and I laughed and laughed at her answers. I thought, oh my god, they were just so funny. And I said to her in, in a comment, I said, I'm going to do this tag. So today's the day, right? It's been one of those wacky days at work. I came home. I said, ah, man, I really should go do that tag and upload it tonight so that it can be public tomorrow. And I figured it's a one and done, no editing. So anyways, here goes. Seven weird things about me. Okay, I got my list. Seven weird things about me. So when I thought about it, I said, well, I probably am I'm not going to have seven weird things. And then all of a sudden these things came to mind. So anyways, number one. Um, and probably the most frustrating for my husband is that I can never, no matter how hard I try, put a top on a container, a tube, a jar correctly. Sometimes I just kind of like lay it on top. Sometimes I screw it in halfway. Sometimes I lay it next to it. And, or sometimes, you know, it looks perfectly closed and he picks it up to go put it away and the whole top flies over. I'm just not good with putting tops on containers. I'm just really awful with that. And, you know, one time I did it to, uh, I had like a, a big cold container of fingernail polish and I didn't put the top on right and I grabbed it, the top flew and fingernail polish went all down my clothes. And granted, I was only wearing, you know, grubby sweats and all that, but still it, it totally took the, <laughs> the color off. You thought I would have learned. But I cannot put tops on anything, and I can't seem to, and I really do work on this, I do, truthfully, I, I can't seem to put something away in the same place twice, you know, or consistently in the same place. I, I tend to, I'm very disorganized, I guess. I have um, a very creative mind, I always say, it goes in many different directions, but one of the things that I'm not good with is organization as far as physical things. Jay can go grocery shopping and he can line all the canned goods up in the cabinet. So he's got the tuna fish, he's got this, he's got everything lined up perfectly coordinated. Within two weeks, it's a total disarray because I can't do that. I can't function that way. It's too orderly for me. So he always goes behind me, will screw on a cap, complain about it. And of course, he'll try to organize the things that I didn't put away in the spot it should have been. Now, he's not really crazy about that. You know, I mean, he doesn't go on and on about it like some people, but he lets it be known. He can't find something because I didn't put it away where it was supposed to be. It's kind of funny because I can always find everything. Even if I have no idea where I put it, I can find it. I just, I just somehow have that ability to find what I'm looking for. No rhyme or reason, no logical place that I put it, but I find it. Uh, number two, I have a mental block when it comes to pronunciation. I hope I pronounced pronunciation correct. And it seems to be that the more I try to say a word, Navea, Navia, Navua, the more I try to say that, Alunalim, Alunalamin, Alunanamin, 
yeah, <clears throat> the worse it gets. And English is my second language, so I kind of like, okay, I use that as an excuse in a way. I never really learned how to pronounce things appropriately. I certainly, and I don't, I, my spelling is horrible. So I do have a creative mind, so I kind of make up pronunciations of the way I think things should sound. And certainly I do the same thing when I spell. It's very, um, it's, I spell it the way it sounds. And that's just that's just the way I am. I'm 68. I don't think I can retrain myself to do it differently. I don't know. <laughs> Number three, enclosed spaces drive me nuts. I, I cannot, I, I've, won, I've gone through a car wash once in my life and I opened the door and got out. I can't be in that enclosed environment in a car wash. I feel like I'm going to drown. I feel like there's water all around me. I'm going to be trapped and I'm not going to be able to get out. So I can't handle enclosed spaces. I, um, I can't go through a tunnel. Like we'll go down to Boston and we have to go through this big long tunnel. He warns me when it's coming up. I kind of hold my breath and I kind of talk myself through it. Yes, you're going to see the daylight soon. You're going to be through this tunnel and just really kind of talk my way through it. But tunnels and car washes just do me in. Um, elevators, for the longest time, I could not get on an elevator. I would get on and before the doors closed, I would just boot it right back off. And then I would convince myself to get back on and the same thing would happen. I would just jump back off. So I got into a habit when I was traveling more to always make sure I had a hotel room near the ground floor so that I could go up and down, you know, two, three floor flights or whatever, and, uh, and not be on the 18th, 19th, 20th floor up. In later years, I've been able to master the elevator sometimes for a short jump, you know, like from the first floor to the third floor, just to make myself do it. But more often than not, when that elevator door closes, I, I put my hands out and I just I just jump out and I look like a freak because sometimes there's people in those elevators and I do it. Um, but I just can't I just can't handle that. Um, number four, my makeup. I I always I have a ritual. So every morning I wake up and I always gently wash my face. Not a whole lot because I don't think my face is needs to be really scrubbed badly unless I'm peeling from my Retin-A. So I kind of gently wash and I use, I put my toner on. I uh, grab my 10 times magnifying hand mirror. I go out and I get my coffee because usually Jay's up ahead of me and he, he's got it brewed. Then I go sit in my easy chair with my magnifying mirror and my mascara and my coffee. And I put on my first coat of my mascara on both eyes. Usually before I even do my mascara, I've done my eye drops, but so anyways, I do one solid coat of mascara on both eyes, upper and lower lashes, and I'm drinking my coffee and I let that dry and you know, whatever. And then I get up and I take a Q-tip and I dip it in baby oil and I wipe off any of the residue of the mascara, including on my lids. Now I use very little oil on my lids, but I will if I have a lot of, you know, smudges. And after I've done that, then I will put on my sunblock on my face, and then I start to apply my eyeshadow. So I completely do my eyeshadows and do everything, and then the final coat of mascara before I put any makeup on my face. It's, it's a ritual. So once I have my eyeshadow all done completely, then I put on my foundation, and I put on whatever else is gonna go on, blush, you know, contour, whatever I'm going to do, and my eyebrows are last. So, very much a ritual. Mascara first, wipe off the excess, do all of my eyeshadow, brush off if I have to, brush off any residue, and um, do, you know, a final coat of mascara, you know, and all that, make sure my eyeliner and the whole nine yards, and then I do my foundation. So usually the only thing I have on my face before I do that is my sunblock. I usually start with that and let that dry. But then I'll do my foundation, I'll do my eyebrows last, and then I spray with whatever setting spray I use. So I think that's kind of weird because I think most people do it the opposite way around. But I can't even imagine doing it the opposite way around um, because that seems weird to me. So that's, that's how we do it. Um, number five, the other really wacky thing about me, I've probably 
pumped gas three times in my life. Seriously, pumped gas three times in my life. I am fortunate that my husband pumps my gas when it runs low. I usually tell him he'll go out, he'll pump my gas. So typically once a week, he'll fill up my gas tank and I never have to pump gas. The, the three times that I've done it, it was a very much a traumatic experience. I, I, don't like, I don't like pumping gas. I don't like holding that nozzle. I don't like the, the smell of the, the, the gas fumes. I don't like how my hands feel. I don't like how the thing goes on and off all the time. I feel like it's going to jump out and just, you know, spray everything with gas. So I, I do not pump gas. And uh, on the rare occasion when Jay's not been able to pump gas for me, he was away or something like that, I've been blessed to have close friends that will go out of their way to come pump gas for me. <laughs> I kid you not. So yeah, very, very weird fact. Pump gas, 68, three times in my life. Uh, number six will probably be one of the ones that most people won't understand or even expect. And that is that I'm extremely shy. I, I, if you know me well, you know I'm shy. I, I'm typically your wallflower. If I'm in a group of people, I am the most quiet. I am the one that is the most laid back. And I'm the wallflower. It takes an awful lot for me to get out of that mode, to get into that social mode, to be even to even act like a social butterfly, you know, I, it's very, very difficult for me. Um, there have been times in my life that I could not even get out of my car to walk into a building, a store, or anything if there were a group of people by the door. I just couldn't make myself get out and walk by them. Um, I don't know why. And oftentimes in my life, that's caused me a lot of stress because I, I can feel the buildup. I've got to walk by these people. I've got to do this. And it's just really difficult. Yet in my day-to-day -day job, I have a very public-facing job. I'm a real estate professional. But most of the time, I do real estate training. So when I trained, I remember the very first time I trained in front of a group of people. It like a, I think it was like 100 and. 20 or 150 people in the crowd and it was my first teaching gig and it was a live presentation I was so scared and um, and I I didn't think I would be able to do it I thought for sure I would mess it up but then when I got on stage and I started to present my topic I knew my topic really well so I started to present my topic it was like like a switch had been triggered or pulled and something came out of me I, and I think back on that time, and it's like something else took over, you know, another, another me came out. And I taught that class, and I got rave reviews on that class. I don't even remember teaching the class. I remember standing there, panicking, thinking, whew, 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 taking a breath, take a breath, picture all these people naked in front of me just so I could relax. And then I started to go, and I taught for three hours. And... Um, yeah, something came out. So every time I teach, it's almost like a performance. And now, of course, I'm doing it all via Zoom, so it's a completely different environment. But it's it's like I get into my groove, I get into my comfort zone, and I know my topic. Um, I, I may have to reflect and look at notes or something just to stay on track, but I know my topic and it comes out of me. <laughs> somehow it just comes out of me and the same thing when I'm talking to a buyer or to a seller about selling their home or buying a home something else comes out of me and I'm able to communicate that and I guess in a way too when I'm doing a video I can't I can't script myself I, I can have my notes I can look down I know I know what I'm going to talk about but line by line it's very difficult for me to to script myself line by line because I just can't do that so I, I have overcome a lot when it comes to my extreme shyness, but that shy girl is still inside me. And I work hard to help that shy girl not be so shy, you know, uh, and, and, and I mask it well because most people would never guess. They would absolutely never guess. So number seven, and the last one is number seven because Sheila said seven weird things. So number seven is, and I'm proud of number seven, I am a coffee snob. Yes, I love, 
I love coffee beans. I don't buy ground coffee, I buy coffee beans. And I love the ritual in the morning. Sometimes while Jay gets up and I hear the coffee grinder grinding those coffee beans, and I know the water's boiling. We have an old um, Melita system where we have the cone and we put the coffee grinds into it after we've ground them all up and add the water and let it pour through. And it takes a while, but the whole house smells like coffee. So I'm a coffee snob but it has to be my coffee beans when I do it at home if I'm going to your house you can serve me coffee any way you want I'm just fine with that but at home I have to have my coffee beans I have to hear that grinding noise I have to smell that fresh coffee and then I wait like a, a kid in excitement for that last drop of hot boiling water to go through that cone and like I said it takes a while when you do it that manual way instead of a coffee machine but the coffee is so so good so I'm a coffee snob and I am proud of it I love the smell of my coffee beans and I love drinking coffee. So that's my seven weird things. <laughs> were they weird? I think they were weird. Um, but I'm going to link Sheila's video where she did her, her seven weird facts about her. And if you're a content creator and you want to just have fun with this, go for it. I'm sure she would love it if anyone else did it. So what, so what are your seven weird things? And if, you, and if you're a subscriber watching this video, leave me a comment below and tell me what your seven weird things are. And if you don't have seven, how about one? Any, anything like that. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you kind of enjoyed getting to know the fact that I have some weird things in my life, which I do. So thank you. I will see you in my next video. You guys all behave. Bye-bye.